Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of uh, ICPA Clinical Series. This is the nineteenth episode we are having, and this is by the count of episodes. Otherwise, we have had many special episodes. One of the special episodes was on uh, the latest CDSCO uh, rule for medical devices, which had caused a lot of confusion. For which people didn't know what is what is going to happen in Exponent Mumbai, and now Exponent Delhi is coming. so we had called in experts who um, busted all the myths and misconceptions and they gave the real picture of what the exact medical devices rule is and uh, once that medical devices rule episode is over, was over, got over we moved on to back to our clinical series and as you all know icp clinical series the philosophy is each episode one clinical challenge and uh, we have covered variety of topics so far we have covered aesthetic dentistry we have covered uh, endodontics we have covered microscopes magnification and several episodes on implantology and uh, today we have yet another topic in implantology an advanced topic zygomatic implants and to do full justice to that topic we have an expert Dr. Sankalp Mittal, oral maxillofacial surgeon from Jaipur. Dr. Sankalp Mittal is the additional principal, superintendent, and the professor and head of department of oral maxillofacial surgery, Government Dental College, Jaipur. He did his graduation from SS, uh, SMS Medical College, Jaipur. He went on to do his MDS in oral maxillofacial surgery from Cots Manipal. he is a diplomate of icoi wcoi as well as aoi and being an expert in the field uh, who has an experience of having done so many zygomatic implants today he is here to give insights from his experience simplify the entire topic and make it easy for everybody to understand and take their first step towards zygomatic implants so i welcome dr sankalp to take over and start his topic welcome dr sankalp just trying to you can start talking about the you, about your experience in zygomatic implant the slides will come they will follow
Okay. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah you are audible. I think. Uh, sorry for this technical problem. No, it's okay. That's And, okay. Uh, so whatever, sir. Uh, Uh, unfortunately we cannot share our screen but still i can speak on something uh, my experiences on zygomatic implant whatever questions which i have received ah. so but, uh, the basic we just want to know how we, uh after having done your oral maxillofacial surgery from cots uh, and uh, starting your conventional oral maxillofacial surgery practice how did you enter zygomatic implants how was the journey what was the journey all about so uh, i used to uh, i still remember my first case it started with a poor girl who had a ossifying fibroma in the maxilla so right side ossifying maxilla we had removed after healing then she was a young girl so we only offered her that she should go for a fixed prosthesis and since that time we were very young and uh, you can you know how every young surgeon is so we thought that we'll do some bone grafting there autogenous bone grafting and we'll and then after that we'll put some implant in that and without realizing that uh, that there is no bony walls there we did some autogenous bone grafting to that girl and then unfortunately when we entered after a few months in there only that screw was there which we put to hold the bone graft except okay. that nothing was there which so then was we, this? which year was this this was 2007 sir 2007 2007 sir okay. so now as what what uh, you know what happens in normal department sir so the surgeon was an happy but the colleagues were very happy so then we had to think something else and uh, luckily i was lucky that time uh, i attended some avmsi in a conference in that uh, international conference held in bangalore sir so in the professor dau then uh, they presented something on zygomatic implant so that gave us an idea that why not in this girl we should try for zygomatic implant okay okay uh, and uh, i was fortunate that my uh, my teacher was also supporting me dr dk gupta so he also said okay we'll go for so that's how we started for zygomatic implant that was our first case since it was our first case so we did it very meticulously so of course it was a success and then it gave us a very good uh, uh, very good confidence that we can use this type of cases uh, with the zygomatic implant and then the second case which was referred to was, was a years ago that time How many people were uh, were doing zygomatic implants in India, sir? Hardly I any. think uh, hardly anyone, sir. Doctor Guna Silan, sir. Doctor Girish Rao means it was difficult to even uh, consult your case or difficult to discuss also. So that's why I said I was lucky that my teacher was uh, had a faith on me that he allowed me to do this thing in the, his uh, guidance. Okay, okay. So And like we uh, like this we started it. and the second case that was and the about? second case is uh, particularly interesting and of course i would like to share it sir because it was a young girl who was at that time was in 10th standard who was referred to me because she was refused from every center that she had she didn't have any bone in the maxilla even in mandible also so she was refused that she cannot she was a case of ectodermal dysplasia sir. okay and of course she was a very pretty girl but without teeth and this allular process So again, we thought that we'll go for zygomatic implant, and in mandible we plan for nerve lateralization, which was a procedure as with at that time we were doing it regularly. So fortunately, that case also went very well with the help of zygomatic implant and nerve lateralization. And then uh, you will surprise that that girl later on opted for dentistry, sir, 
and then of course you know we happy that now she is a periodontist oh great okay whenever she meets me now sir she complains that i have not given him a he could occlusion or the vertical is good <laughs> high vertical is too much because now she understand everything but uh, apart from that she is very happy sir. so okay, she okay. was motivated with those implants that she opted for dentist so that was how the journey began sir and then uh, now we have so many mucor cases but that yeah. time also is we used to have sporadic cases once or twice in a year so we rehabilitated those cases also so that experience gave us too much of uh, confidence now when we have this uh, pandemic of mucor mycosis so we knew that how to treat these cases so that experience helped us now in 2019 20 21 to how to treat those mucor cases we knew that nothing is going to happen and zygoma zygomatic implant is a better option for those these patients so okay. that's how it is started sir so this enter second wave of covid was what got all these mucor mycosis cases yes sir so starting if you can say april 2021 for the delta wave if you can say how many cases you must you must have done so far reconstruction sir actually uh, if you talk about only reconstruction of the zygomatic implants are in uh, including our co- college practice and our private practice sir we must have done more uh, approximately 80 85 cases 80, of mucor yes sir okay, roughly around okay. and then there are certain cases sir unfortunately in which we have to sacrifice the zygoma also sir okay. so it was not possible in them to put zygomatic implant then certain of those cases were uh, lucky that they got rehabilitated with the help of some sort of free flap like fibula flap or elecrest flap so we have done a number of cases of those also uh, roughly around 7 8 cases in which the fibula has been placed and we have placed implant in those the these cases are also very challenging cases sir because fibula is sometimes fibula is there but it is not united to remaining bone so it is difficult to rehabilitate them we are we have developed a protocol for that also this is under you can say under observation or you can say under follow up go if go if god bless us then hopefully in near future we will give a new protocol for fibula with zygomatic implants okay okay great we have a surprise uh, participation here we have got a guest here dr amol thorat oh. i request dr amol please come on the screen please turn on your camera and unmute your mic dr amol thorat hello hello yes. so how big is your team now uh, in your college people who are uh, handling uh, uh, zygomatic implants so you are not of? audible now am i audible now am i audible i'm audible now so you are audible enough i think there is an issue with dr sankar okay Are you able to hear me, Doctor Sankal? Now, hello. To all the viewers, there is a technical problem that is happening because of which we are not able to uh, have a smooth flow for the event. Doctor Sankal has not been able to uh, display his PPT. There is some technical problem with the st- with Streamyard because of which. we are not able to place uh, ppt we have got one more guest and even he is dr amol thorat even he is having some difficulty getting through the connection and we are not able to have his visibility you know and we are not able to hear him as well
Dr. Amol, can you start your camera? Dr. Sankal, Amen. what I'll do is I'll take up the questions sent by yes. the people who have registered. Okay. Right, sir. Right. So. Just a minute. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear? First? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome Hi, sir. Doctor. Hello. Good evening. What a surprise, sir. To have you here. <laughs> Real surprise. It is a privilege to uh, hear to you. Sankal. Dr. Sankalp is having some problem with his presentation. We are not able to see his presentation. We are not able to run it. So I thought we should have Dr. Amol Zorat and we can start some discussion. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with the questions that have been sent by yes, the sir. people, by the participants who have registered for the show. So at least we'll go through each of those questions. The first one is, what are the precautions we should be taking during treatment planning of zygomatic implants? Uh, sir, uh, if you start from the basic precautions, you know that the zygomatic implant is uh, not a normal implant surgery. It may take a slightly longer time. So, of course, a medical evaluation is very, very important, especially if the patient is aged because most of these patients are aged. So, you have to have a medical evaluation. Patient should be fit for a longer surgery. And especially, you should be able to bear the high doses of local anesthesia with the adrenaline. Second thing is, most important thing is the evaluation of mouth opening. Most of the time, we make a mistake. If the patient is not having a proper mouth opening and more importantly to keep his mouth open for a longer time so that is one more important thing that a patient should have a good tm joint for the zygomatic implant surgery third thing is preoperatively you should evaluate whether you should have a sufficient zygomatic bone volume or not hardly though it is very rare that the patient is having a, a very thin zygoma but then certain cases are there like ectodermal dysplasia where you will find a very thin zygoma, and it is very difficult to stabilize the zygoma in that. Okay. And then finally, during the surgery, the most common complication is either you enter into orbit or you enter into infratemporal fossa. So always remember the line that if you have a dip and if you cannot, if you are not able to palpate it here, the drill or the uh, your depth page, then either you are in the orbit or you are in the infratemporal fossa. So once you get a dip immediately stop it and then you evaluate whether exactly you are if you are able to palpate it here then you are safe otherwise you are either in the orbit or in the infratemporal fossa okay so these are the usual precautions which are i which i feel that they are mandatory you said the mouth opening should be sufficient yes sir you will check because you use law yeah so what all tests do you conduct so what are the parameters to say that this patient is good enough to undergo zygomatic implant treatment Means, sir, if it is a patient, is first of all, patient should be willing and motivated. If it is more, if it is patient is uh, patient is willing and motivated, then the mouth. If you consider the mouth opening, then whatever system you are using, you should know the what is the length of the drill, minimum length of the drill. There are certain systems which gives you different uh, length of drills, uh, starting from 40 mm, then 50 mm, 60, 80. But then there are other systems which have only two sets of drill, like 60 mm and 80 mm. So you know that if I use this particular drill set, how much mouth opening I need for this. And similarly, sir, if you suppose the patient is having the lower arch is also edentulous, then it is a very good situation because you have extra, extra 10 to 15 millimeter. But if the lower, charge, lower arch is having prosthesis or natural dentition, then you have constraint of space. Then it will be very difficult to put implant in proper position. And third thing is, sir, uh, you should have different, different hand pieces also. Sometimes you need uh, angle and pieces to put your implant in uh, proper position. What is proper position is means you want to place your implant as posterior as possible. You don't want to come your implant to come out in canine or first premolar region. You should come out in second premolar or at least in first molar region. So for that, the only requirement is mouth open. Okay, great. Uh, there is Dr. Rohit Chadda who is asking, can we ask questions here as well? Yes, of course. Dr. Rohit, please type your questions. We can read them. Put the put your question on the screen so that everybody can read the question and pick it up and take an answer. Thank you. Yes. Uh, may I ask one question here? Yes, sir. Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Dr. Sankalp, uh, how about the 
nuclear microsystem case is operated uh, many a times to be see that there is a contraction happening post surgery so how does it affect uh, mouth opening uh, whatever may be the reasons or because of the contracture it is if you have to evaluate it pre operatively if you are if you are confident that uh, during the implant placement when we'll give the incision if you are able to release the contracture and, and you are confident that this will increase the mouth opening then only we go ahead with that uh, implant placement if you feel that even after the surgery the mouth opening is uh, even after the incision the mouth opening will be difficult then we have to think twice before placement of a zygoma because placing a zygoma that is coming out in canine region and having a long cantilever posteriorly there is no fun sir in that so zygoma has to come out in premolar or molar region okay and any uh, specific dimension of zygoma that is required to do a uh, quad zygoma or place two implants in one zygoma Sir, uh, means if there are two things one is the length of zygoma and another is the width of zygoma the length of zygoma i mean is from the infra orbital margin to the vertebrae of the zygoma means the length of the zygoma is similar what we calculate in our uh, normal implantology that there should be at least 2 mm bone above one implant and 3 mm bone between these two implant so if you want to place a cord zygoma and suppose the tip di diameter of uh, tip of your zygoma is uh, you can say average it is 3.5 so 3.5 plus 3.5 is for two zygomas and you want 3 mm of space between them so that is 10 mm and then you want extra 2 mm space between uh, both the above both the zygoma so four so at least you need a 14 mm to 16 mm length of zygoma to place a cord zygoma and regarding the width of the zygoma even if you are placing a uh smallest or thinnest of the zygoma you need at least 7 to 8 mm width of the zygoma so you, okay, you. Uh, it is not uh, if you are planning a cord zygoma sir then i will always say that you should plan it first from the software whatever software you are using like i use dtx pro you can use it uh, blue sky bio or so blue sky bio or so there are other software also so uh, instead of planning it on the, just on the cbct software always plan it on the Uh, implant planning software that will give an idea that whether the cord zygoma is possible or not. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Right, so Dr. Rohit Chadha has sent a question. I yes, do sir. a lot of conventional implants and I want to upgrade to zygoma and nasalis. Please guide me about uh, the textbooks. Of course, that we can type it out. And when we raise the flap, what are the chances of countering PSA and MSA? No, no, no. When you raise the flap, you have to go entire subperiosteal. So when you go subperiosteal, you will end while raising the flap. You will never encounter posterior superior artery or alveolar artery or middle superior alveolar artery. Only thing is when you make the window to do the sinus lift. Like in zygomatic implants, also when the maxilla is convex, we make an extended sinus lift window. So while making the sinus lift window, that time you can encounter the branches of middle superior alveolar artery. So if it uh, if you cut it. Then it may sometimes ooze, and you may have to cauterize it. Otherwise, while raising the flap, it is rarely that you encounter the uh, branches of middle superior or posterior superior. Okay, okay. Next, we have Doctor Aniket Singh Chauhan, and right, uh, he has uh, conveyed his regards to you. He has worked with you in two thousand eight, I guess, and okay. uh, today he has sent a question. my question is how will you bypass sinus membrane and how will you how you close and uh, if there is any expo exposed implant yeah, any any specific graft is required and if i am not wrong you are asking that when we are going through the then our zygomatic implant is going through the sinus i will be how will we save the membrane so Maybe. see uh, it all depends on the anatomy of the maxilla If the maxilla is concave, then uh, we are lucky. We don't have to even enter into the maxillary sinus. Our uh, implant will be extra sinus. We will be only engaging the bone of the zygoma. Then the remaining implant will be extra sinus. The problem happens when the maxilla is convex. Then there is no way you can reach the zygoma bone without entering into the maxillary sinus. So at that time you have to go through the sinus. Now that when you are going through the sinus, 
the thing which decides the prognosis or which uh, decides the uh, future complication is the whatever how much amount of crestal bone you have if you have sufficient crestal bone that is 3 4 5 mm then it will prevent your further sinusitis uh, 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 form uh, incidences of uh, sinusitis in the uh, uh, maxilla because of the oroental communication the important thing is to understand that the sinusitis happens not because of the implant passing through the sinus sinusitis happens because of the uh, because of the persistence of the oroental communication and this oroental communication happens when you have thin crestal bone and moreover after that you rupture the sinus membrane so if you have a thick crestal bone there is no need to worry about the sinus membrane if you have a thin crestal bone then you have to save the sinus membrane anyhow by doing a sinus lift and if you during sinus lift if you rupture the membrane then you place a barrier membrane over it whatever we do it like a normal direct sinus lift so always remember if you have a thick crestal bone then you don't have to worry about the sinus membrane but if you have a th- very thin crestal bone then you have to lift the membrane and you have to do the you will follow the chaus technique that is the extended sinus lift and the implant lift dr rohit chadda can you please reframe your question i'm not able to read it if you can reframe your question or reframe what you want to ask and dr santosh if by chance the membrane is ruptured and we have oral and oral communication how do we treat it if the membrane is ruptured sir then the same thing what we do in our direct sinus lift cases you have to cover it with the norm uh, our collagen membranes that is uh, the only uh, basis said, yeah you said uh, that when you have thin residual bone height very less residual bone height yes, and sir. you have to take care of the sinus operation and it happens yes sir then what do you do means sir the you know, if your ostod with the, ost- the ostotomy which we have made through the crestal bone which will that will be occupied through the sinus where that will be occupied by the zygomatic implant but the, that yes. ostotomy could not many a times that is not the exact size of the implant so you can have leakage through the around the implants and that yes. can enter into the sinus but it, to enter into the sinus there should be a perforation in the membrane so you yes. cannot seal the you cannot seal around the zygomatic implant that is impossible but you can at least seal the perforation in the membrane so you concentrate only on the integrity of the membrane you seal that perforation of the membrane you by you putting a single layer or double layer of collagen membrane and then after can that you can happen? do sorry can it happen uh, that uh, you place the zygomatic implant and yes, then sir. the patient develops oroental communication it can happen sir days. of course it can happen if you don't uh, uh, take care or if you don't plan your case properly many a times see this is the you this is what which used to happen in earlier cases when people used to go trans sinus through the palatal bone so palatal bone used to be very thin and because of the flexion of the implant because of the uh, movement micro motion at the abut- implant abutment junction the patient used to lose that thin palatal bone and then there is there there used to be no bony barrier between the palatal mucosa palatal and the schneiderian membrane and if the membrane is thin or somehow it has ruptured then there used to be a constant oriental communication and there was no treatment for that and for that those cases only dr benmark uh, developed the inferior meatal ostotomy so at least there can there can be some dependent range so it can happen okay. that is why sir uh, the, the those cases in which you have a very thin crestal bone either you keep your implant extra maxillary that you don't go into the sinus at all but the problem with keeping extra maxillary is sometimes you become too buckle so that is also a problem so if your uh, biomechanics allowed you to keep it too buccal then you can go ahead with that but if biomechanics mean your occlusion planning is not allowing it to keep it too buccal then you have to enter through the sinus only then the best thing is to ref- uh, uh, to reflect the membrane carefully if it ruptures to line it with the uh, this thing uh, by membranes and then you close it you don't load it immediately you keep the implants uh, subgingival only you and then you close it primarily so let the membrane heal and then you load it after 3 months does uh, prf have any role in healing in such cases uh, uh, sir i have i have stopped using prf long back because 
uh, uh, I am sorry to say, but I never admired it. But then I have uh, because I have stopped using it long back, so I cannot comment on it. It may be useful. It may not be useful. But then I'll 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 if I have to take a chance, I'll I'll believe on the membranes only rather than PRF. And which membrane do you prefer, native or uh, uh, cross-link? Which collagen? Uh, cross cross-link, sir. Either BioGuide or Creos. Okay. Okay. So there is uh, one query that says that we don't enter into zygoma at all. But uh, as uh, Dr. Sankalp said, that is an extra maxillary approach, which you yes, can sir. do if biomechanics allow it and if biomechanics have no problem with it. Otherwise, yes, you have to go through the sinus. Yes, sir. And uh, the same question, the same uh, person with the same next question, would you recommend drawing a line from second premolar to zygoma before starting the drill? That is actually neither needed nor nor it is possible, sir. Mm-hmm. Because intraorally, when you expose it, there is bleeding, there is... Uh, so so many constraints are there. The, uh, the, the only thing is which I recommend it if you are placing a single zygoma, there is no need to draw or anything or no need to measure only. You just expose the zygomatic buttress and you stay 2 to 5 millimeter ahead of the zygomatic buttress. So ahead of buttress and parallel to buttress. You will never miss the center of zygoma. So you don't need any measurements. You don't need any line, nothing. Just expose the buttress, okay. stay a few millimeters ahead of the buttress and parallel to buttress. Okay. Okay. I'll take one question, another question from uh, people who have registered before. What precautions do you take when placing uh, zygomatic implants in a diabetic patient? If it is a diabetic patient, sir, mostly we will select a patient who is controlled diabetic, but then the history is very important because it is not about the... Uh, the sugar levels. It is about the comorbidities associated with the diabetes. So diabetic patient, if unfortunately is having cardiac history is also, renal history is also, then you have to think twice about placing zygomatic implant. Especially if the hb one ac is uncontrolled, if it is more than 7, 8, 9, then you think twice about placing zygomatic implants. And second thing is, most of the time uh, we have seen that by, by, uh, what we have experienced is the complication is not because of hyperglycemia. It is the hypoglycemia which also can cause complication. So you have to take care that if the patient is not able to take this proper food or something, you avoid insulin or the oral hypoglycemic so that at least the hypoglycemia doesn't happen. And third thing is I don't do a grafting in a diabetic patient until unless it is absolutely necessary. Mm-hmm. Great point. Yes. Okay. Choice between two-piece zygoma and basal, which one do you prefer and which one is better? It is not about a choice, sir, or it is not about the which one I prefer. It is key what other implants I am using. It is not if I am anteriorly and posteriorly. If I am using a normal conventional implant, then I don't have choice. I have to use normal zygomatic implant. If the other implants are single piece uh, implants, the basal type of implants, then I have to combine them with the basal zygomatic implant. The, because the difference between both of these is the amount of flexion. The basal zygomatic implants or single piece zygomatic implants are meant to be banded. Sir. You have to band them to uh, align them. So to band them, the, the shaft is very thin, or approx- approximately 2 to 2.8 mm. So it has got a very inherent flexion. means you'll get a very good primary stability in the bone. Still, you can see the flexion. You can band it. You can move it. There is visible movement in there. So that move, uh, moving zygoma, if you combine it with a normal conventional implant, the entire flexion is transferred to the conventional implant. So you cannot combine a single piece zygoma to a two piece implant a single piece zygoma is combined with always with the single piece implant and two piece zygoma is combined with the two piece implant so it is your choice but if you are uh, if your other implants are single piece then the zygoma will also be single piece okay but then always remember single piece zygoma gives you an option of only cement retain processes there will be no option for screw retain process okay next question asked by the participants success of zygomatic implants overall and your experience in your cases my, if i talk about my normal cases normal cases means those patients who has got atrophy of zygoma because of parod- atrophy of valvular bone because of periodontitis or long term edentulis the success rate is compared to the international literature that is above 90% 93 94 95% rather in last many years, I have not seen failures. I have not seen a single imp- zygomatic implant case failed after loading. But right. then this was after this was only up to 2000. 
1920 when i have started uh, placing implants in mucor cases the mucor cases the success rate drastically dropped down to almost 60% 60% to 65% and you won't believe it when you place our implant all the implants have got a very high top and suddenly within a, a span of few weeks only you start losing your implants like that only so you don't know what exactly this happening sometimes you lose your implant or sometimes you have uh, abscess formation there on the zygoma sometimes you have uh, necrosis of the zygoma around the implants and then extraoral sinuses are there so these are very tricky cases what i have hypothesized actually uh, the actual cause even i don't know but what i have hypothesized is that uh, we place zygoma in mucor cases those cases which apparently radiographically looks normal the zygoma radiographically looks normal but somehow there is some problem in that zygoma it is radiographically normal but probably either metabolism is not normal or it is ischemic so when you place yes, our zygomatic yeah. implant yeah in that it leads to that that uh, uh, that remodeling is not happening the newborn is not forming so that lead to unexpected loss of zygomatic implant so initially we used to be very uh, confident when we used to start zygomatic uh, mucor cases we used to promise the patient that it will survive but now uh, we are very careful we first tell our patient that it may work it may not work we should go for free fibula first if he is not interested in free fibula then we go for it okay and what what happened in that second wave why did we get so many mucor cases we didn't have so many cases in the first wave later also in omicron wave we didn't get so many cases but delta was it because of vessel occlusion because of which there was drastic reduction in the blood supply and the tissues went into uh, mucor mycosis what, what was the reason yeah, i don't know the basic pathology is this sir that there is uh, occlusion of blood vessel but why it happened in second wave and why it didn't happen in the first wave sir this if you find uh, uh, the only logic is that there is some problem in the second wave virus this is the virus which is which has got some properties or which has got some uh, antigen or something like this which has uh, propagated this uh, second wave mucor mycosis rather than in first wave we didn't have this mucor mycosis nobody knows the answer sir the probable reason is because it has happened more in india or developing countries it has not happened in developed countries so they are not bothered about having research over this that what was the reason exact reason is but uh, definitely sir the use of steroid use of oxygen hospitalization these things are not a factor for this we have seen cases who even don't know that they had a corona they didn't have fever they didn't they were not hospitalized a 17 year old young girl who didn't have any form of obesity all of these patients have developed mucor mycosis so uh, the oxygen so steroid the virus, they are not related the virus. it, it is the, the virus, virus only yes okay 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 uh what advice do you give for radiographic analysis for zygomatic implant selection the uh, again sir i will repeat sir the, of course uh, oh, we need a cbct there is no doubt for that but then the only problem in cbct is sir usually when we plan our normal implant cases sir we need a sagittal section or a coronal section but in uh, zygomatic implants sir it starts anteriorly and end posteriorly so we need a paracoronal section which is usually not possible in a normal cbct software and you mm -hmm. don't know where exactly my zygomatic implant final position will be so it is always advisable if you are planning a zygomatic implant case you use a implant planning software along with a cbct so it is very important you put your cbct in your implant planning software you virtually put the zygoma in your plant position and then only you will come to know whether this in this position how much amount of bone i have in the zygoma whether all of my when my zygoma is surrounded all, all around with the bone or i have to shift my implant slightly buccally or slightly uh, to mesially or slightly buccally so it it is very very important that you should have a software if you want to plan it that will give you an idea there is another question i think it, this is regarding a system particular system how is alpha bio zygomatic implant system i think there is some uh, confusion sir alpha bio doesn't have zygomatic implant uh, till now alpha bio is not into zygomatic implant but then if you talk about alpha bio is uh, made in israel company there are certain other companies from israel which are making the zygomatic implants and as you know all the israeli implants are usually more or less same so if you talk about there are adin zygomatic implant is there byline is there and norris is there they are all same 
so they are good there is no uh, if they have a particular feature that they have internal lags they have a particular feature that their threads are like your normal implants so you are very familiar to use with them and they are there is a very interesting feature that their body is polished so if you are uh, worried about that i don't want to use a surface heated implant or rough surface implant you can go ahead with those polished implant so always remember internal lag and polished body these are okay. the uh, uh, classic features of no israeli implants okay great next question is uh, since zygomatic implants are so different from conventional implants how does it uh, affect the charging how how will you convince the patient and how it will differ when it comes to charges telling the charges to the patients Based so the there number. is uh, there is no doubt sir it depends on uh, uh, your intention sir if you are new in zygomatic implants and you want to somehow do this case then you may be offering it in free or you may be paying to the patient also so it depends on your intentions if you want to learn the zygomatic implant then you forget about the charges but once you are confident and you know that what are the uh, responsibilities you owe with the zygomatic implant then you will not hesitate in charging that you know that it is ta- if the if you are putting a implants which is worth of course uh, worth uh, 20000 or 30000 then uh, probably you may charge your patient somewhere 80000 or 1 lakh or 1 lakh 25000 per implant okay okay so i usually t- just uh, i uh, i don't go into details uh, much details with when i communicate with my patient i usually just tell them i am going to put a longer implant which is slightly longer implant it is going to use your cheek bone and only mm-hmm. difference for you is that you will have some swelling here for few days and it will cost you more that uh, okay. the costing can be compensated because you will not need bone grafting and bone membrane for that so it is cost is no usually the same sir if you put up good bone graft and a good membrane it will be the same and that sometimes okay. it is more than that okay any plus we have to do all the graft can load immediately yes sir we can load it immediately yes yeah, so that is an added advantage yes sir and there is no uncertainty sir we with the direct sinus lift uh, we know however good we are but we don't know how much bone will form and how good it will be and when we will be able to load it and there are certain chances that it can Uh, the post operative desensor infection can happen so these things are not there sir with zygomatic implant if it is a single zygomatic implant it is much more simpler than a doing a direct sensing okay doctor amal what is your experience with zygomatic have you uh, have you been uh, doing them regularly or uh... Uh, i am in no comparison with doctor sankal as far as zygomas are concerned I had placed my first zygomatic implant, I think, in 2011, and I have done hardly 20-25 zygomas after that. So okay. the experience is pretty less. But uh, what I would like to comment over here is what this guy has said is all experience, hardly anything is given in books. So this okay. comes only out of uh, experience and lot of practice and the authority which we are saying. it doesn't come overnight okay i know him for few years we are friends since uh, like many years now so i, I don't want to sound biased but uh, he is one of the best in india and not many people can match his skills i know we so have been seeing his pages in the groups and i was very also. eager to join this discussion yeah yeah thank you i'm so thank happy you joined in so dr sankal the next question is uh, what angle or degree of placement of posterior implants you advise the uh, i don't know if he wants to ask about the mesolateral angle sir but that we cannot control that is depend on your starting point and the end point the starting point is crest of the ridge we don't nowadays we don't want to go palatal to the crest so rather i prefer a classification that is palatal crestal and buccal other than going extra maxillary sinus intra sinus so nowadays nobody wants to go palatal because biomechanically also it is not suitable so you have to decide what will be your entry point either it can be crestal or buccal and then in zygoma you want to engage the maximum of the bone so that could be either center of the zygoma or slightly inferior so that will decide your angle of placement or the direction or trajectory of the zygoma only the angle which you can alter is the anterior posterior angle which i have de- already discussed that you can enter from the canine region also 
you can enter on the first premolar or you can enter on the second premolar molar region also so as you get more and more experience you try to shift your implant more posteriorly you want your implant to come out in the first molar region so that there will be no cantilever so if you go into first molar region your implant will be more or less roughly around 90 degree to the occlusal plane if you go into the canine region your implant will be more or less uh, you can say 60 degree to the occlusal plane so for the beginners you should try to bring your implant with the first premolar or in between the first premolar and the second that is the safest and gradually you can uh, try placing your implant in the first molar region. Okay. so the best thing would be to get it in the first molar uh, first molar region. regions but it is very difficult yes. in the early phase of uh, early hemorrhage. phases sir and especially the patient is not having sufficient mouth opening okay 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 yes sir great uh Would you suggest implant in anterior zone in quad zygoma cases, or we can load the process on just four zygomas? Yeah. Now again, it depends. Yeah. yeah. Again, it depends that uh, if you don't have any bone in anterior, uh, anterior, anterior maxilla, then yeah, there is no point doing some grafting and unnecessary placing an implant. Uh, then uh, it is better to load only on the four zygoma. That is okay on four zygoma also. You can load it. But uh, if it is a very young patient, like there are certain patients of ectodermal dysplasia and you want them to, your implant to survive more, then you look for certain places, like you can put your uh, one implant in nasopalatine canal, like those in places you can place one implant so that you can have extra anchorage, you can have extra torque value. Otherwise, as such, four implants are more than enough. Okay, okay. And uh, I, I guess we have completed all the questions. I just want to know what is the new thing happening in zygomatic implants? Like what is the current research happening? How they are improving upon what we already have? Sir, the again, the new thing is first, uh, uh, because the patient, uh, the the usually the, the beginners are having some problem with the, as you said, the, 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 everyone is concerned about the sinus membrane and uh, sinus membrane integrity, this and this. So you must have seen the Norris and all these companies have come to the specific Zygoma drills and Zygoma guides, uh, sorry, Zygoma drills and Zygoma kit. So these are good drills, sir. You can save your membrane. But then the only problem with these kits are, sir, they have been marketed as the extra maxillary kit or extra maxillary implants. So they have generalized the everything. That every patient you can do the extra maxillary. So that is also not good. In every patient, you cannot go ahead with the extra maxillary technique. Sometimes because the maxilla is convex and you have to enter into the sinus one. But still, it is an advancement. At least somebody or some companies talking about or focusing over the zygomatic implants and there are dedicated kits. And second thing is, sir, about the guides. Though you, if you see the premium companies, Novel, Stroman, they have not come up with the guides of the zygoma. Sir. They don't talk about the zygoma guides because they are not sure whether it will be as accurate as they are with the conventional implants. But then the Norris has come up with the e-zygoma guides. Sir. The only problem is they are not marketing it. Uh, you have to send your case to them and then they will send the guide made to you. You cannot do it like your other guide systems are there. And then you have to request them to send the guided surgery kit also. So it, you can see it is a closed type of system, which is more, not much, much, uh, much research have been done over it, not much studies have been done. You don't know what has been pre and post uh, superimposition has been done, what is the degree of deviation over that. And then third type of guides are, sir, which have been made locally by our labs. There are certain good labs are there in India which are making the guides but i am always skeptical about them sir because you don't know what exactly the results nobody has shown the result pre operative and post operative only thing it can guide the entry point that this will be your entry point so more or less they will help you it is not fully guided but it will be helpful so you can use that guide system and finally if you want to be more accurate sir then recently i have seen certain surgeries with the navigation system like x guide and uh, navident they are, of course, very useful if you are acquainted to them. The word acquainted is very important because it is initially very difficult to use the navigation systems. But once okay. you get used to that, I am sure that they will be very, very helpful in zygomatic implants. Okay. Uh, there is a question from a beginner. As a beginner yes. in zygomatic implants, how can we start? It is simple. You choose those cases that in which you have certain amount of bone is there, like 4, 5, 6 mm bone is there. So even if you are not able to place the zygomatic implant in that case, 
you can do some indirect sinus lift direct sinus lift and you can get away at least you can give the prosthesis to the patient but that will give you a confidence that the, everything is not at the stake you can try the zygomatic implant but if it is not possible then there are other uh, options are there and second thing as we have discussed already is the forget about the money in the beginning so you just try placing the implant and uh, believe me it is i am not exaggerating it is much more single zygomatic implants is much more simpler than doing a direct sinus and less morbid great is there any fellowship i think one student has asked uh, is there any fellowship or any certificate program that they can attend to learn zygomatic implants as such uh, any structured fellowship program is yet not there but then we often on uh, uh, the all of us who are doing zygomatic implants are organizing such type of workshop two three four days workshops are available so many of us are gunasilan sir is organizing it in uh, chennai he is the best mm. in india if you are lucky you can learn from him uh, then uh, every one of us is organizing you can contact us so uh, you can learn from and those been, small small you have been organizing your courses in jaipur only or in a, some, some other cities as well uh, sir we are organizing uh, the the unique point of jaipur course is that it is we have total freedom in that course and it is a very extensive course so if somebody can attend that then of course he is welcome the other courses are sir then we have two three faculties are there so we have to understand each others so then sometimes uh, uh, means you have to accommodate each other in those courses okay okay i think we have finished all the questions and uh, we have got a compliment that it was a very useful and informative session and uh, to all the viewers although we had technical glitches in the beginning the ppt could not be run but uh, dr sankalp took up all the questions and uh, we have had a great discussion where he gave out every possible detail answered every question and uh, i also thank dr amol surat for joining and being a part of this program and uh, all those people who attended this i think we did not miss a single question I, i we can take this last question i think i had missed this how to design the stents for drilling i think you spoke about the guides and the stents yes sir I means so you have to put it on the software and uh-huh. then software should have the option for this to get, make a design for zygomatic implant make a guide for zygomatic implant if it is there then you can you, uh, you can easily uh, you can easily design a guide but there are uh, i really doubt that those guides can be very accurate because you know you can control the entry point you cannot control the exit point okay okay thank you dr kirti dr kirti was my bds batchmate thank you for joining in and uh, i think the information that dr sankalp has shared today is invaluable for the beginners there were many beginners who had sent their questions and they wanted to get their queries cleared and i think they are all happy after having heard dr sankalp in this show so thank you everybody thank you for joining and thank you dr sankalp thank you dr amol sir I, i would like to really apologize from the no, that no, i could no, not share my are, ppt sir are, no no some yeah. things are not in our hand technology is one thing where we are at the mercy of technology sometimes we just become helpless that's fine but we'll have your show again sometimes it's not the yes, end let us take it as the trailer to your actual show we'll have a mega show sometime in the coming months and will make it grand and will make it big and uh, people who really wanted their answers they are all happy and the way i can see the feedback here everybody is happy so thank you so much thank, thank you, you even though there there was no ppt there were no pics you still stayed and you uh, maintained the enthusiasm you asked the questions and you got clarity you got answers thank you for everything so i once again thank today's speaker dr sankalp mittal axillary facial surgeon from uh, jaipur with his extensive experience in zygomatic implants dr amol thorat professor antis and implantologist dear friend from uh, pune for joining in and uh, this was 19th episode of icpa clinical series each episode one clinical challenge soon will be coming up with our 20th episode and you will hear more about the episode on social media thank you and good night thank you thank sir you. thank you everyone thank you amol Bye thanks